Hello everybody and welcome to our Best of IFA 2010 Awards. And with me is Steve from carrypad.com, umpcportal.com and our partner in meetmobility.com, our podcast. Welcome to the uh, blog apartment for IFA. We get into it in terms of uh, what, what's going to be our Best of IFA Award yeah. for our product. And actually, I think uh, it's pretty easy to choose. It's going to be the easiest uh, Best yeah. of uh, uh, Product Award we've ever done. And that's the uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab, of course. Um, that doesn't mean to say it's going to be a big seller, but for us it's been right. probably the most complete uh, tablet product, uh, apart from of course the pad and maybe the Dell Streak that we've seen. So uh, at the show, definitely as a new device, definitely the best one. Yeah, actually I would even say it's uh, pretty much the first little Android uh, tablet around there because uh, actually, that's funny, <laughs> thanks mate, actually you, you're finally getting the same look and feel that you were expecting to get because you you were used to this performance and usability of an iPad. What Samsung did is got them close to it and maybe even yeah. of it. Um, best product of IFA 2010 goes to the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Check out our hands-on video. Definitely. I finally got my hands on the Galaxy Tab from Samsung and uh, we would like to do a little kind of performance benchmarking with this uh, Need for Speed Shift application. Here we go. That looks pretty good. That looks nice. <laughs> that looks very nice. Well, one thing I need to tell you is I think the screen is just brilliant. So this is very smooth, no frame drops at all, graphic looks very good, um, the accelerometer is very responsible, responsive. or responsive, sorry, responsible. I'm very responsible when I'm driving, even though <laughs> that I had some drinks before. So uh, don't drink and drive, just to let you know, as you can tell by the result of my driving that this is not really helpful. Yeah, it looks very good. Absolutely. Right. So what's uh, next? Do we have a runner-up? Uh, yeah, let's talk about the best runner-up. Uh, well, I think it's pretty clear for the both of us again. That's almost pretty, yeah, clear. Uh, are you going to say the ViewPad 7? Yeah. yeah. There you go. The ViewPad 7 from ViewSonic. Uh, another complete 7, funny, it's another 7-inch Android tablet. <laughs> And we're not 7-inch Android tablet fanboys, <laughs> much, uh, but uh, this is another complete, and this is important, I think there are only three really complete Android tablets out there. There's the Dell Streak, there's the uh, Galaxy Tab, and there's and the, the ViewSonic yeah, ViewPad. Absolutely. It's got the Google absolutely. Apps, it's got 3G, it's got GPS, it's got everything you expect from an Android smartphone. At a great price point, That's $399. So, the best one up of IFA 2010 goes to the ViewSonic 7-inch ViewPad. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, a world's first for us, world's first 7-inch um, Android 2.2 tablet with full fun phone functionality. So, oh, that's not what I wanted to press, this one. You could, in fact, use it as a very large mobile phone. Thankfully, it has Bluetooth 2.1, um, so you can uh, not have to hold it next to your ear. Um, using that te technology, we have a full-size SIM card slot in here. That one there, and next to it is a micro SD expansion slot, so up to 32 gig of memory through that. Also packed inside here, we have um, assisted GPS. So, in terms of mapping, benefit of Android 2.2 is we can use pinch to zoom on this. Um, it's running slightly slow because it's running off 3G as opposed to our Wi Fi connection as yet. Um, it gives responsive, it's full capacitive touch screen, so great um, user experience. Feedback on these um, capacitive buttons here as well. Um, in terms of applications, we're going to be Google certified, so we've got full access to Android Marketplace, so 100,000 plus applications at the moment, um, including things like Fring, so you can make video calls around me for augmented reality, which of course you need to use the cameras for. So on the front we have a VGA front-facing camera, and on the back 
we have a three megapixel camera in there as well. Yeah. So we should um, talk about the manufacturer of Aoife. That's a, that's a pretty easy one. Which is too. also quite an yeah, easy well, one. Well, well, it changed a little bit from last year, because last year we gave our uh, Best of Aoife award to Medion because they had a really new, great product portfolio, complete product portfolio. But this year, uh, it, it's one of the big ones. Yeah. And again, it goes to this South Korean company that the occupied the complete uh, hall over here. Hall 20? Hall 20. Unbelievable. You, you should see the same booth uh, over CES again, because that's what they're mainly doing. It was just fantastic. So anyways, what are we talking about is Samsung. Samsung, our... Um, they didn't surprise us at all because we were already expecting some kind of uh, uh, performance from, from Samsung in terms of uh, product design, uh, build quality, but it's not only about the Galaxy Tab. I think the Galaxy Tab is a fantastic product, but also their netbooks that they were showing off over here. Um, Samsung is all about build quality and design, and I really like that. Yeah, when I looked at, well, you tipped me on the N350, which uh, is a one kilogram netbook, dual core, uh, high res screen, and they're even showing some LTE and WiMAX versions of yeah. it. They're really yeah. pushing forward uh, one kilo dual core Atom netbook for between 400 and 450 euros is actually very interesting. So check out our Samsung N350 hands on. Finally, we're getting our hands on the new Samsung N350, which is supposed to be a dual-core Atom netbook, but it's kind of interesting, this version over here is only running on the Pine Trail N455. That means a single core was 1.66 gigahertz. Um, the difference with this netbook is, first of all, Samsung definitely updated their design uh, compared to, you know, it's kind of interesting to see the N150, because it seems to be a little bit influenced by the N150, which is a low entry level netbook from Samsung. Uh, the N350 also comes with an LTE module. We have a couple of prototypes on the other end of the booth. Um, how about a runner up uh, manufacturer? I'm looking at uh, my screen here and, and seeing one manufacturer that I'm I not sure if we can. Yeah, well, we definitely need to mention Arcos, but I'm not sure if they're, if, 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 if they're still a runner up because Arcos is already around on this market for quite a while. But the product portfolio, in terms of yeah, tablets, little handhelds, little mobile internet device or PMPs, right, was just impressive, and especially the price point. Mm. Even though that some people, you know, I uh, would say, okay, a 99 euro, a 99 dollar device, what can you expect from it? Mm. Especially when it comes with a resistive screen. But what, what Arcus did with these devices was just amazing. Coming to the final Arcus product over here, the Arcus 43 internet tablet. Um, that's actually a 4.3 inch. I think it's a resistive touch screen. I'm not even sure if it's multi-touch. Um, it's running Android 2.2 and comes with 8 or 16 gigabyte of uh, flash memory and costs about 199 euros. So I'm pretty sure that this is also around 199 dollars. Um, again, 1 gigahertz ARM Cortex A8. So the same CPU that we saw on the 7 inch and on the 10 inch and that we also know from the Samsung Galaxy even though that this is a resistive touchscreen, I think it's very responsive. Oh, that's that's looking great. I mean, come on, it's a one gigahertz ARM Cortex A8 that you're getting. So. You shouldn't have any performance lags at all. Very interesting device, the Arcos 43.